Hi folks, we've got a problem with this 1.9 CDTI Vauxhall Signum. Same engine they put in the uh, uh, various amount of cars. This is the uh, Ecotec version and it's the 150 brake horsepower version. It's been running very sluggish and it's got no fault codes up. We've had a look at the swell valves and they appear to be working fine. So we're going to look at the EGR valve now, take it out, give it a clean, see if it's leaking first of all, because that's the big problem with the EGR valves. They tend to let by and that's when you get issues. So let's take, it, let's take a look at that. Right, so we've got no fault codes on this uh, Signum. As I say, it's the 1.9 CDTI engine, the 150 brake horsepower version. And the EGR valve sits at the back behind on the right hand side of the engine. So let's have a closer look at it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to remove the top Ecotec cover. This is just a plastic cover, just pops on. And again, the one, if you're looking at one of these engines, you don't know what it's 120 brake horsepower or the 150 brake horsepower version. This is the 150 brake horsepower and the oil filler is on the right hand side of the engine. The 120 brake horsepower version of this engine, the oil filler is on the left, just a little indicator there you can tell by just looking what type of engine you've got. So you just pull these up. They should be on little rubber bungs. Four of them. And sitting at the back of the engine here is the actual EGR valve. The rubber stoppers come off on that, which we've got to remove. And uh, it has a little bracket there, which is held on by a 10 mil. There's two 10 mils there, basically. And then you've got um, two 13 mils there. These two hold the exhaust manifold on. So they've got to come out. So you've got them to come out. You've got these to come out. And there's two more 10 mil headed bolts down here. And on the back of the actual solenoid there, the electrical connector lives down there. So we're going to have to pull that off as and when we uh, actually undo these bolts here. So the first two bolts I'm going to undo here is going to be these two 13 mils. They go through to the uh, the exhaust pickup point down here. There's a flexible coupling down there. So I'm going to undo these first. Now there is a gasket apparently in between this joint here where my thumb is down there, as you can probably see and we don't want that to fall out, so just be aware that there is a metal gasket in there. As you can see, these are quite long bolts. That's the first one out, let's put that up there. And I'm gonna take this front one off now. I've got my hand underneath here, as I say, just to possibly catch the gasket when I'm undoing it. I just don't want to lose it. They have been known to suddenly disappear and get lost. So let's just undo that. Remove that bolt. And I'm just feeling my way down here for the gasket. I can't actually fill a gasket on it. I would imagine that that might be missing. Right, okay, so we've done that one. So now I'm going to undo the four 10 mil bolts that hold it to the inlet manifold. I'll just do the top ones first, just to crack them. And the ones below, let's take that bracket off. As you can see, look, that's where the uh, other bolt or bracket should be held on by. And there is, uh, there doesn't appear to be. Oh, is there? No, the nut is on there. So let's just put that up there. Let's take this one out. It looks like they've been put in the wrong order. Because as you see, this one's got a stud on there, but we weren't using that. I would presume that this stud one is supposed to go down there. And uh, then you can put the extra nut on. So that's what I would suggest is the problem there. Right, there's one of the studs out. That's the other bolt. That's the other bolt there. The final one at the top there. This should be the last one that's holding it. So I'm just going to hold this in place in case there is a gasket. I know there's one between the uh, inlet manifold, as I've already said. So I don't want nothing to drop about there. So there should be two gaskets on here. 
Right. Well, I can already see that the EGR valve is full of rubbish. There's the, as you can see, look. I'm just going to disconnect that cable first. And to do that, we just pull down this little plastic clip there. There we go. There we go, that's come out now. Right, and there it is. There is no gasket on there. And there is no metal gasket on there. So that's interesting. So that's the uh, EGR valve out. Right, so here we go. This has got a metal gasket on it, which I don't want to damage, obviously. I will get that off in a minute with a blade. I'll just slide a blade in there. But as you can probably see, the EGR valve is full of actual soot and crud and rubbish in there. Now, before we go any further, these are the two chambers that exhaust gases come in there and come out of there. And normally the EGR valve is in the shut position. So you shouldn't be getting any seepage or leakage through here. Now, what I've seen people do on other YouTube videos is they take it off like this, they start cleaning it, pouring all rubbish, uh, cleaning solution in it, and then they try and operate the solenoid and make sure if it, but that doesn't show whether you've got a problem or not. We need to check whether these, this is in the stuck open position, because that's the only time you're gonna have a problem with this, is if, if there's little uh, flaps inside aren't sealing and it's letting by, uh, and that could cause poor running issues. So before we do any cleaning to this, I want to see whether or not it can hold fluid which means that it is working correctly. And if that is the case, it's working correctly, I can then illuminate this as being the problem because it is in the shut position. And it could also have, also have a, an intermittent problem. In other words, it could be opening and shutting all, most of the times, but every now and again, it could be getting stuck as well. We'll only know that when we take the solenoid off there and check the operation of the shaft that goes through the body to see if it's nice and smooth. So the first thing we're gonna do is pour some fluid without even touching it, without cleaning it, pour some fluid in the chambers and see if it seeps away to show that it's letting by. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I've just got some old white spirit here and I'll try not to spill it, but I'm gonna try and fill these chambers up. Let's just pack that up a little bit just to keep it level. Like that, there we go. And I'm gonna put some uh, white spirit in these chambers here. Don't forget we haven't done anything to this yet. We don't wanna move anything. So we just wanna see if it is letting by to confirm we've got a possible problem with it. Oh, look at that, look. There we go, did you see that? And it's seeping out, look. That chamber seems to be holding. There's two separate chambers here because there's two flaps inside there. So that one is uh, holding and that one is definitely letting by there, look. Can you see that? There we go, look. Superb, so we have found a problem with the EGR valve. And don't forget, we have no fault codes up, we're just losing some performance now on this. So that's now encouraging that we have found a problem. Now, if I would have just cleaned that, as everyone else does on YouTube, what I've seen, and then done this test, we wouldn't know whether or not we did have a problem. Well, we can now see that we have got a problem with that. That is the actual benefit of testing it before you do anything to it. And that's what we've just proved there. By filling this chamber up from this way, as you can see, it comes flooding out of there, look. Look at that, look. So, definitely a problem on the end set of the uh, solenoid valve flaps there, whatever you want to call them in there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm basically going to undo this solenoid. It's, I think they're T25 bits. It's four bolts that hold that on, as you can probably see there. Undo them, pull the solenoid away, and then I'm going to check the operation of the actual shaft as well, just to see or not whether or not it was getting stuck as well. Right, so this is the actual solenoid. And as you can probably see, that shaft there is moving lovely and freely. There's no gr ground chi or ground chi bits in there. So I'm happy, providing we've got an electrical supply onto that, that that's actually working correctly. Next bit to check is obviously this part, which has got spring loaded underneath it. And I can see that it's actually working correctly, but it's not seating on solid metal clicking. It's a bit dampening in there, and it's hard for me to show you the actual inside there while it's still all dirty. I don't think you're gonna be able to see that, are you? 
but it's, it feels very cushioned in there. So what I'm going to do is to clean this out. I'll start off with using the uh, the white spirit. That should break down the oils and grease and stuff like that. Get a little toothbrush in there, give it some agitation in there. And uh, I'm lucky enough to have an ultrasonic cleaner. I may even put it in there to give it a final clean out, but uh, you can do it manually with carb cleaner and stuff like that. So just persevere with it, make sure it's as clean as it is. And then after it's clean, we'll do that test again and see if we've actually cured the seating problems on them. So I'm gonna do that now. Right, okay, so I've cleaned it all out now and uh, We'll give it a little check by putting some fluid in it. I'll just try and show you how it works inside first of all. Now I don't know whether you can see or not in there, but when I lift up, there's the little seat on that side that operates and the, uh, the little flap inside. If I spin it round, looking through the, uh, the exhaust part, you've also got one in there as well. You may not see that one all that clever, but it's exactly the same. So there is them two, and they both go, one side is one chamber, one side is the other chamber. So we had the outer one which was um, letting by, so let's now fill it up again well, once we've cleaned it and see if it lets by. <sighs> right, okay, so put it there like that. I'll turn it around that way. Okay, let's get this uh, white spirit again. Now again, two separate chambers. I think it was this one that was letting by. So let's fill that up. Fill this up. And I think you can safely see now that we've cured our issue that's not letting by at all now, so we're happy with that. And I think we can safely put this on now and say that it's working correctly. Here we are back at the car. I'm going to plug this uh, sensor cable in first. And basically it's the reversal of taking it out. Put that in and then push that little clip up. That locks it in place. Now I haven't got the um, inlet from the exhaust pipe there. Um, there's not a lot I can do about that for the moment. I'm just having a look down here in case someone else has dropped it and I can't actually see it. So uh, we're gonna have to do without it for the moment. I will order one and put that on, but uh, I've got to put this back on the car just to see if we can use it. So all I'm gonna do now is put this back on the same way as I took it off. Make sure the gasket's going correctly. And again, I'm going to replace these bolts in their correct location this time. So let me do this and I'll be back with you in a minute. Probably easier if you just uh, locate the top two bolts first as you uh, want to get that gasket, that metal gasket, make sure it doesn't drop down, which is probably easy to do if you ain't careful. So I'm putting the two top bolts in first so that I know that I've got the gasket holes in. I'm not tightening them all down yet, I'm just literally just dropping them in their holes for the moment. Imagine it would be a little bit tricky getting this bottom gasket in, that's probably why a lot of people drop it. That's probably why the uh, previous person who done this job probably may not have even realised that it dropped out, you see, so that's what's happened now, I would have thought. I'm going to nip these 13mm bolts up first that hold the exhaust in place. I'm just taking them up evenly. Make sure that everything's seating correctly. Appears to be. And then again, you haven't got over tighten these, but uh, obviously I've got to take them off again. What's that? <laughs> Okay, that's that. The bracket for the engine cover goes on next. It doesn't actually take very long, this job, so. I gather on the Sephira, for example, you have to take the cover off there, but we've got decent access to this, so that's that. Okay, that's it. That's the uh, solenoid back in there. There's another nut to go on there. I'll put another nut on that bottom one uh, when I change that gasket or put a new gasket on there. Right, let's just put that rubber back on. These rubbers actually go in the lid. So you take them off of there to make it go on easier. There's four in total. They always pull out. Let's get them off of there. And as you can probably see, they just slide back into the uh, holders there. Easier said than done. There we go, just compress them a little bit. It just makes putting these covers back on so 
so much easier when these little plastic things are put in here. Right, okay. <coughs> Let's clip that back on. See, they sort of find themselves, because the tapered cut caps find the balls very easily. If you haven't got them on, you can uh, play about for ages. So, a little firm press down. There we go, that's it on. Let's charge it up. Take it for a little test drive and see where we are. All right, okay. Let's get in the car. Good old Jimmy, there's no fuel left in it. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Right, let's shut that down. Right, baby. Let's try this car out. No miles on the tank, look. That's my boy. Hey. Right, let's put it in reverse. I don't know whether we've cured it. If it hasn't cured it, then I think it's one tooth out on the timing belt. So, uh, we've got to play it by here. I'll know as soon as I pull away whether it's cured it or not. What's that light on there? Lights. I've got a bulb out, have I? That's what we've got. In and out, half in and half out. I must have a bulb out somewhere. Don't feel as quick as Jimmy's 120. Jimmy's got the 120 brake horsepower van. But this is an auto box, you see. So it could be that. But I'll let you know when we get onto a bit of open road a little bit. If you I'm... make it. Hey? <laughs> if you make well, it. Well, if we make it, we ain't got no petrol, have we? Got angel wings, look at the window, like angel wings. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the uh, aircon, isn't it? Just put it on the, take it off the aircon for me, shall I? I have, I've turned it off, it's freezing in there. Oh, right. No, it's still not right, I've something still not right. I think it's one tooth out on the on the belt. Because when I took it off on the 150 engine, on the camshaft, on the 120 engine, there's a little pointer, but it doesn't, doesn't appear to be that on the 150 engine. If you look at the video I done on this uh, the, on, on the Signum, when I changed the cam belt and the water pump, when we had the water pump problem with it, I had to put my own marks on. So there's a very good chance because when I accelerated that time, as I said to you, and then I the the, the, uh, the, the light come on for the engine management light, that could have slipped a tooth. But um, we definitely now know that the EGR valve was faulty, and it was letting by, which probably wasn't helping matters because I could turn out of a turning like this. I've got some power there now, you see, look. Before, you'd have to have your foot flat down and it wouldn't pull away. And it's very dangerous pulling out of a junction. So that's one bonus we've got. It's uh, pulling away a lot better now, which indicates to me that that possibly was that part of the problem. But the other problem is, is that I put the belt on in the same position that I took it off on because I couldn't see the timing marks. So I made my own marks and just referred to them marks very good chance that the timing's out by one tooth, Sharon. As it was on Jimmy's van when we first got Can I just back. say, I ain't got a clue what you're going on about. I'm talking to the people. But you said Sharon. Yeah, with well, your ear, aren't you? <laughs> you're sitting not talking to you with your ear, isn't it, baby? <laughs> Unbelievable. So the next thing I'm going to be doing on this will be probably the brakes. Front brakes, I've got to have this done oh, for the MOT. Did you ever do the headlights? No, they've got to be done as well. But again, the... Um, Headlights that I've got in this at the moment are, are they LEDs? I think they're LEDs. And I don't think with the new MOT laws in the UK now that you can um, have LED headlights. So I may just put the standard ones back in and just get them to adjust them up for the MOT so, and then take it from there. 
Oh, not them standard ones. Yeah, but as I said to you, they might have been misaligned or something, or, or, or way too low. I don't know. We'll only know that when they get on the meter in the MOT station, they can tell where the dip beam comes. Because the dip beam was the problem. It wasn't the main beam. And I think that someone... That was the brightness, wasn't it? No, not necessarily the brightness, yeah. No, it was the dip beam was the problem. When you put it on main beam headlight, it was fine. But when you're at an MOT station, I think they only check the dip beam. So I was told whether that's true or what, I don't know. Someone might answer that in the comment sections. So the brakes need doing for the MOT and also the headlights need realigning. But I may also have to do that timing belt because I don't know whether or not that's going to throw out the, um, the fuel mixture and it might come up with an emissions problem because it's not firing at the right time. So that's another thing I've got to look into. But look, that's pulling all right there, but it's definitely not as quick as Jimmy's 120. Whether that's because it's an auto box, I don't know, but uh, Jimmy's is a lot quicker. Funny thing was, I'd already put 30 pounds in Jimmy's car. Ciao. I know. I'll give him 30 quid's worth of diesel, and I've got this back with nothing. I don't know if they drive about like that. Who? Well, anyone can drive about, shall we? You're not no, for, no miles. For fuel. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. 30 is my lowest I would go. Yeah, where's he going? There we go, let's get in here. Let's get in here and get some juice into it. One of the divers, wasn't it? I know. Right, there we go. There you go, baby. 73 pounds. Oh, it's a rip off here. 73 pounds. Turn that off. There What? Oh, parking light. There is a light out. That's what that bulb thing's doing on there. Oh, well, that's all right. That's a bulb needed. Got to do that for the MOT as well. Another job. Oh, hello. How do I OK that? I've forgotten. Press the middle bit, innit? <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I, I ain't drove it in so long, I've forgotten how to drive it. doing there we go that's it that's it oh hello left the handbrake on again <laughs> hey? like a learner it's like a <laughs> oh no no let's see if it'll get a bit of acceleration Ooh. what wouldn't do that before what pull it pull me back in my seat a bit Yeah, still not, it's, it's, it's okay, but it's it's like because I drove Jimmy's car when he was one tooth out, it's a similar sort of performance. And then once you found that one tooth out and I put his belt on correctly, which we did, then it, it, woof, it went. This being a 150 brake horsepower engine, this should be very nippy, even though it's an auto box. So um, I think I'm gonna have to put the uh, find out definitely where them timing marks are definitely on that camshaft uh, i've looked at other videos on youtube and um also noticed that they haven't got the timing marks on so i'll have to look maybe in the forums uh, where the timing marks supposed to be and uh, i know the marks on the belt uh, i've got that's when i've done jimmy's van you line the belt up with the timing marks on the top pulley and the bottom pulley and everything's okay but uh, we couldn't do that on this because I couldn't see the timing mark on my car, Sharon. Yeah. Oh, don't they take their time, don't they? She's ancient, look. Look, 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 look. Oh, she's fake me. Thank you very much. <laughs> you get a lot of old people driving around here. I've got nothing against old people driving, but... No, um, we're them. <laughs> eh? Because we're, we're, we're them. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not that old. No. Uh, sometimes you see them driving along and they're oblivious to the long queue of traffic behind them. And th what that tends to do is the impatient driver, especially the uh, people with probably the big powerful cars, tend to overtake on these single lane roads and then that's where accidents happen. But you can't put an old head on young shoulders. So there you go. Right, okay then. We're back now, I'm gonna leave the car here. Hey? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to leave the car here. And we'll see you in the next video. <clears throat> Me and Sharon. Right, Sharon? Yeah.
and that will probably be doing the brakes. Anyway, thanks very much. Hope you've enjoyed this little video. I've loved we'll, it. We'll see you in the next video, and until then, bye, bye, -bye. for now.